Hey and welcome. We're so glad to have you tuning in with us today. My name is Michael and I'm the senior pastor at Community Church and we want you to know every single week our team works so hard to bring content, to bring a message that would be encouraging for your life where we take the scriptures and we make them practical in your life. How you can apply the truth, the promise, the goodness of God's word to your life in a way that you could move forward and ultimately live fully alive. I hope you enjoy this week's message. If you're new, my name is Michael, and my wife Megan and I are the senior pastors here. And uh, even before I jump into our message, I want to bring two things to your attention right off that video. Uh, in, our, in our lobbies at, uh, at Suffolk, Kempsville, and Western Branch, we have these cards. They're real small, but they say, here, is it, here as it is there, the name of this series. And it's going to make more sense in a few moments to you. And on the other side, it says, I'm praying for. And um, I'm just saying this at the beginning, and I'll talk about it more. But here's what I know. The, the power of prayer. Uh, can change someone's life. And specifically what we want to do as a church over the next several weeks uh, before Easter weekend is we want to have people on these areas in our lobbies that we are praying for, believing God, that they would come to Easter at community and put their faith in Jesus Christ. And every single one of us, uh, I'm just going to say it this way as your pastor, if you're new, is okay. We must have someone in our life that we at least know to some degree that's not yet a follower of Jesus Christ. Uh, because the reason we're on the earth is so that we would lead people to Jesus, that we can be praying for, that we can plan to bring. And we believe that as we pray, we'll see a great, great um, harvest of people coming to faith in Jesus. So that'll be happening in our lobbies every weekend in this series. Also, when you leave today, you're going to get uh, a little card, Easter at community card as you walk out the door. And uh, we'll have more of these available every single weekend. But I want you to be intentional. We want to be intentional as a church uh, to be inviters, to be bringers. More people will respond to an invitation to church for Easter than any other day of the year. It's like if you just want to feel successful in life, invite people to church on Easter weekend. And you'll be like, sweet, they're doing what I ask them to do. It's easier than parenting. Come on, parents. You know what I'm saying <laughs> right now. And, uh, and so be intentional about that because we want to see God really, really change lives. Uh, a quick Western Branch uh, service time update for Easter weekend. It was in the video. Uh, we'll say it every weekend. It's on slides. Some of you will still forget. That's okay. It's because you don't, uh, well, we just always don't pay lots of attention. How you know that's true? In Jesus' name. Uh, but uh, Easter weekend, we are having a, a Saturday night service at 6 p.m., and then our Sunday service times will be the same as normal at all of our campuses in Hampton Roads. No Monday night service, uh, Easter weekend. Make sure everybody knows that. Now I can get started uh, after that third round of announcements. They say you have to say things seven times before people get it, so four more times, and I'll say all that, and three of us will get it. <laughs> I am so thankful... Um, for just an awesome team. Didn't uh, Pastor Stephen did a great job last weekend talking about <laughs> raising up next generation. We had Pastor Mike Plain in, in town the week before that who, who preached a great message. And uh, uh, Megan and I are, uh, are, are glad to be back. It's crazy. You can be gone for uh, six days, but when you're gone two Sundays, it feels like you were gone forever. And, uh, and so it's, it's good to be back. And I'm pumped to start this series here as it is there all about prayer. Let's pray. God, we love you, and I ask you today that you would remove distraction. Lord, I, I declare to you, I don't grow tired of asking this prayer because I know how distracted I can get. And so I pray for every single person who hears my voice right now, God, that the to-do list, the, the must-dos after church, the worries, the stresses, I'm asking you, would you remove it all inside of us? Give us a bullseye focus on you. And Holy Spirit, would you speak? In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody prays. Everybody prays. It doesn't matter what religion you are, everybody prays. It actually doesn't matter if you believe in a God or not, Everybody prays. We, we pray. And as, as Christians, as followers of Jesus, uh, we need to know who we pray to. We, we need to know what it is we're actually doing if we want to see our prayers make a difference. Um, some interesting studies I found. Um, a, Gallup, a Gallup poll that was done uh, recently uh, says that 
more Americans in a week pray than do these things, have sex, exercise, drive a car, or go to work. Think about that. That's how many Americans, this isn't Christians, Americans pray. People pray. Nine out of 10 people, they say they pray regularly. 75% of Americans say they pray every day. Prayer. It's kind of interesting if you think about what we pray. People pray on, on sports teams. Both teams pray that they would win. <laughs> People pray when they go to war. Both sides pray that they would win. People, people pray that they would get students, that they would get the best grade in the class. Multiple students pray. We pray. I, I have this burden that we learn how to pray, that we learn why we are actually supposed to pray. I feel that maybe today my message might be a little bit teachier than sometimes I am. I'm more preacher if you're new than I am teachier. Um, if you don't know what either of those mean, then just come a few weeks in a row and you'll figure it out by listening uh, to me. But, but I wonder, is it possible that some of us maybe have been a, a Christian for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years and our prayers are actually not lining up with how God would want us to pray because we haven't learned to pray. I've taught and I've grown up saying prayer is simple. Yes and no. Here's what I mean. Prayer is the most powerful thing we believe as followers of Jesus we can do on the earth to bring change to the earth. That being said, it makes logical sense to me that the enemy would try to make prayer hard. That he would try to throw up obstacles, that he would try to direct us down a path that would actually lead us away from prayer that makes a difference. What is prayer? Well, I'll tell you what prayer's not. Prayer is not sending good vibes. <laughs> People go through difficult times, and here is what has happened in American culture. Hey, I just want you to know I'm thinking about you. Listen, who cares? <laughs> you just thinking about someone who's struggling does absolutely nothing for their life. I'm sorry if you're offended right now. I've seen Christians on social media make posts that say, hey, sending vibes your way. <laughs> There's no power. But we just get caught up in living a life in our culture and we turn aside from this powerful, life-changing life Jesus actually has for us. I'm calling us today to think about prayer. To think about what it actually means. It must be intentional if it's going to have impact. The call of prayer is not to simply check a box. The call of prayer is that we would seek God and find him. And before I jump into a little bit more definition. I want to, I want to share with you something that I believe is sort of just a, where we are as a church moment. I, I shared this, these couple verses and what I'm about to say with our staff last week. I shared them at our leadership summit this past Wednesday night, and I want to share them with our whole church because this is the, this is the jump off point for prayer. Prayer has to come, I believe, from only one of two places. It will come from faith or feelings. I believe for, no matter today if you are a Christian already or not, if you are a follower of Jesus or not, prayer, meaning going to God, seeking God, will come from one of two places in your life, a place of faith or a place of feelings. Let me just share a couple scriptures from you from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 32 says this, 
Remember those earlier days after you had received the light when you endured a great conflict full of suffering. Now what this means when it says remember those earlier days when you had received the light, that's a, um, that, that is the writer of Hebrews saying, do you remember back when you had received the re- revelation or the understanding of the truth about God? Remember when you had come to know how good God is. Remember when you got that word from God to know what to do. For us today, there should be, if you're a Christian, if we're a Christian today, there's this regular experience of getting a word from God, meaning I, I've, I've read my Bible, I've prayed, I've sought God, I feel as though I know what I'm to do, I've got this word from God. He says, remember when that happens, because after it did, here's what happened to you. You had great conflict full of suffering, which makes me go, I don't want to have that word from God. <laughs> What, what it literally means, the word great in the original language uh, means many, perhaps thousands. The word conflict or fight in some translations is like this idea of an athlete being in an intense workout. And the word suffering means mental pressure. Remember when you felt like God told you what you were supposed to do, and all of a sudden it felt like there were thousands of people attacking your mind with great pressure. They just won't leave me alone. And the writer of Hebrews says this in verse 35, don't throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. If you're like me today, I don't feel confident when I feel like I'm under attack. I don't feel confident when it feels like everything that I thought I was sure of was going to work feels like now it's not going right. And then the writer of Hebrews says this in verse 39, we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Your feelings don't save you, your faith does. We're not of those who shrink back because it feels difficult. We're not of those who shrink back because I put my belief in Jesus or I took a step of faith and then it felt like all hell was breaking loose on my life. He goes, no, we're of those who have faith and press forward. So here's my question as we talk about prayer and begin to define it some today. As we've already said, everybody prays. Don't be offended by this statement, but everybody prays just like everybody poops. And I think we should do, I think we should do little books that say everybody prays, just like I read my kids the book that says everybody poops. And I wish that my youngest would start to poop on the toilet so we could finally be done with diapers for the last kid in Jesus' name. You can pray that that would happen. <laughs> Who, who drives your prayers, faith or feelings? If there's a person driving your prayers, if you think driver's seat right now, who's, who's got the wheel? Carrie Underwood, Jesus, take the wheel. You know, I'm like, who is driving your prayers? Is it faith or is it feelings? Is it faith or is it feelings? If I only pray from feelings, I'll never be consistent. If I only pray from feelings, I'll not develop a prayer habit. What is prayer? Well, according to the word prayer used, the translation of the word prayer used in the New Testament, prayer is essentially this, coming face to face with God and surrendering your life in exchange for his. That is what prayer is. I thought prayer was just when I asked God for stuff. Well, if it's what God wants for your life, and it's coming from his heart and your heart, then yes. Prayer, the ancients, meaning hundreds and hundreds of years ago, Prayer always included a sacrifice, a vow of saying, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something to remove myself from, from life as it is in such a way that I could come into a place where I could have more of a focus on you. And I'm saying from this place right here of me and you, I'm, I'm asking what you have to become part of who I am. And that therefore, I, when, I, when I leave this place of being fully focused on you and step into the realm of work and of school and of day-to-day life, I wouldn't operate simply as a natural man, but I would operate as one one who's walking in the supernatural power because of my exchange and because of my relationship with you. That's, that's why prayer is powerful. That's why prayer is powerful. 
What happens in prayer? Well, it's just some notes I think that you could write down as we get started. Prayer is how we pull down power. You and I as natural human beings have no power. Prayer is how we pull down the power of God. The Bible says if you're a follower of Jesus, Holy Spirit lives inside of you. When we pray, it's it's God himself with us, connecting with God in heaven, that we have this powerful uh, unity that begins to come. Prayer is how we pull down power. Prayer is how we take hold of God. Prayer is how I begin to have this encounter and this experience with God that is, that is different than what I can experience or walk in in any other normal way of life. Prayer gets me out of my comfort zone and into what he has. Prayer is giving priority to your inner life. Well, the reason why I believe Prayer is so hard, and there, there's exceptions to this. When I say prayer is so hard, I realize there's, there's a few people who prayer is not hard for. But let me say this. People who determine they want to be a people of prayer, for most people, prayer is hard. Some of what I will teach in this series is how, how to have a consistent prayer life, how God helps us so that we would pull down more of heaven, have, have more here how it is there uh, in the days ahead. Prayer can sometimes be hard. Why? Because we're pulling down heaven because it's supernatural, because it's focused on our inner life. Everything else in our life is focused on our outer life. Prayer focuses on the inside. Now, let me tell you the beauty of prayer more than anything else. If you want to know why prayer is so awesome, this is it. Prayer is how we put God's reputation on the line instead of ours. Prayer is how we put God's reputation on the line instead of ours. I just don't know if it's going to work out, but it's not up to me because I prayed and sought God and he's going to do what he wants. I know it's true that sometimes we don't pray for people because we're not sure if God will answer our prayers, but that fear or that worry, it's not actually about God. It's about what would people think about us. God has never looked down from heaven. God has never walked with us and gone, I really hope that you will help me protect my reputation. He goes, no, put my reputation on the line by faith. So here we go. That was the introduction. We won't get through all my notes for today. (laughs) Matthew chapter six. Perhaps the most well-known passage of prayer in the entire Bible. Jesus says, this then is how you should pray. Our father in heaven Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is how we got the name for the series. On earth as it is in heaven. Here as it is there. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Jesus goes, this then is how you should pray. Our Father. If we're gonna pray from faith instead of feelings, it must start with an understanding of the relationship I have with God. Our Father. The reason I can come to God in faith is because he's my Father. My kids can come to me in faith because I'm their father. If I don't view God as my father, I will struggle to have faith. I will struggle to believe what he has for me is good. Listen, no matter how good you have been as a parent or how good your parent was, God is better. He says, I am a good father. So Jesus goes, if you want to know how to pray, here's how it starts. Father. Father. Now here's the thing about this. It doesn't, it's not a pray these words and check a box, okay? Uh, There's the Lord's, this is referred to as the Lord's prayer. It's a great prayer. You can pray the prayer. It's not about saying these exact words. It's about how has this relationship and the belief in what it says here shaped the way that you actually pray. Our father. The number one determining factor, I believe, of whether or not I pray in faith or strictly by feelings is relationship. Just write it down like this. My relationship with God is the number one determining factor to whether prayers are driven by faith or feelings. 
It starts with faith. It's not the action of prayer. It's the engine. The engine for prayer that works is called faith. We, we, we don't pull down heaven to the earth by praying. We pull down heaven to the earth by praying from faith. There's things that prayer is good for. This science has proven prayer is good for your health. I love to just teach you these things if you don't know them. Prayer is good for your health. Tons of research, tons of studies have been done that people who pray regularly are less depressed. That people who pray regularly, uh, I've read a study recently, have less chance of having a heart attack. Not because they pray, God, don't let me have a heart attack. God, don't let me have a heart attack. God, don't let me have a heart attack. <laughs> like it's, it's good. That's why God told us to do it. It's good for us. Everything affects everything. Everything the Lord would tell us to do in his word is so that it would make our life better, impact us in a good way. If I'm going to pray by faith, it comes from relationship. God cares about your feelings. God cares about my feelings. But he responds to my faith. He responds to your faith. He'll comfort us in our feelings when we're struggling. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is a comforter. He lives with you of a follower of Jesus. He comes to walk with us. But the response that would, that, but, but God's response to us that I'll show you in the scriptures in a moment that would move mountains, it comes from faith. I will not have faith if I don't understand relationship. Never gonna happen. Romans chapter eight says this, those led by the spirit of God are children of God. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. He goes, okay, now you've, you've, you've been adopted. He's your father. You need to get this, Paul's saying. We, we read it when Jesus said, pray our father. The apostle Paul, who, who wrote the book of Romans, is going, listen, understand this, that if you will see yourself as a son or a daughter, daughter, you will cry out, Abba, Father. The, the, the original translation of Abba, Father is like that daddy. I don't, I don't say daddy when I pray. Some people say daddy. I say father. I say, I say I'll talk to the son, Jesus. But my point here is he goes, cry out, Abba, Father. How many of you have ever heard a kid crying out for a parent? Now, if you're a parent, you know this is true. You can tell when it's a real cry. Like you can tell when something's going down. <clears throat> Last week, um, it was just me and my youngest at home. Uh, Griffin is his name, he's two. And I had, uh, I, I, I think I gave him a bath. He was naked, I think I gave him a bath. <laughs> or he just, anyway, I had to go downstairs to get a diaper because uh, there was no diapers in his room. Uh, because by faith, we were not going to be out of diapers this one day. Anyway, uh, and so I go downstairs, and it, you know, as a parent, you're like, I just turned my head for a moment. All of a sudden, I'm downstairs, and I hear this blood-curdling scream. Like, in a moment, I mean, I start, I start praying and running immediately upstairs, and he is just screaming at the top of his lungs, Daddy! What had happened was uh, one of some of my windows are broken in my house. Uh, well, they don't stay up, and so it's hot. So I had propped one up with a book, uh, and then he took, he took the book out and put his hand right here, and the window came down like that, right? And so, so that's like, I knew when he was crying, and I get up there, and you know, it's, this has nothing to do really with crying out, but I mean, his finger was like blue, and, and we just prayed really hard, and, and he's two and got better. <laughs> I'm like, he could have lost his finger. I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I believe in prayer. <laughs> that cry, you know what that cry was? That was the cry where the most powerful prayer gets answered. It's where my faith and my feelings collide and my father makes sure that my problem is solved. He had a feeling, but that feeling didn't make him cry out to me. 
his faith that his father would respond is what made him cry out to me. God responds to our faith. He responds to our faith. The reason my two-year-old was confident that I would show up in a crisis is because we have a relationship that doesn't only exist when there's a crisis. I pray every time life's going to hell. But the problem is there's no relationship with the Father. So it's impossible to actually have a relationship based in faith if we only pray in crisis. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that God doesn't hear you, and I'm not saying that he doesn't care. I would tell you today we will not consistently experience the power of God in our life if we only pray in crisis. Because we won't know how to pray. The disciples, these guys that walked with Jesus on the earth, they were with God. They're like, teach us how to pray. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm just letting this, is, this, if you're new to our church, this is me. I'm like, this is what I am personally wrestling with, so I'm wrestling with it with us together. Like, if the disciples said, Jesus, teach us how to pray, then we are missing what God wants to do through us in prayer. If we just go, man, prayer's real easy, just do it, and everybody does it. I'm going, God, I want us, I want us to learn how to pray. He says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, which means we can live with an expectation that on earth today, we would experience heaven. What does that mean? Well, here's what I can tell you about heaven. The book of Revelation tells us, the last book of the New Testament in heaven, here's what there isn't, sickness. There's not gossip. In heaven, there's unity. Doesn't matter where you're from, doesn't matter your background, people walk together. He says, pray, seek me by faith. But how often do we seek him only by feeling with faith what he responds to? There's this passage of scripture in Mark chapter 11. In Mark chapter 11, I'm gonna just jump to verse uh, 21. Jesus had been walking with the disciples. He had been in this place called Bethany, which he loved because it was a place where he was loved just in personal relationship where they didn't need him to work any miracles, but people would just hang, hang out with him. Uh, and so he was with his disciples and he had, he had cursed a fig tree because he was really mad because this fig tree had the appearance of, of having fruit on it because its leaves were in bloom and he was hungry and he went over to it and it didn't have any. And so he just like, man, just die tree. <laughs> And it did. Which is just a signal for all of us here today to find, to find faith in what I'm about to say to you is God's not trying to get us to be fake and pretend we have something we don't. That just makes him mad. He's like, no, I know you. Don't try to pretend. I love you. I want you as you are. Don't try to pretend because when you pretend to be something you're not, you leave yourself empty and you leave everybody else one thing. So he's frustrated about that, and his disciples are like, Master, look, that tree, that tree that you cursed, like it, it really, that tree did what you said. <laughs> Verse 21, that's what he said. Rabbi, look, the fig tree, you cursed is withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you have received it and it will be yours. How many know that's faith? Have faith in God. I'm saying to you, whatever the biggest obstacle in your life is today, have faith in God and watch him move. And watch him move. Faith gives prayer power. Faith gives prayer power. God is not looking for me and you to come up with the power. 
God is not looking for me and you to know a secret formula. God is not looking for us to live a life of perfection. He's looking for us to be changed by him. Have faith. I have a desire to see here God respond to our prayers so we could experience so many of the ways it is there. I have this desire, this faith in my heart to go, what if, what if our church was super intentional right now? This moment, this season, here we are, end of March, to go, Lord, we're gonna learn to pray. I'm gonna learn to pray more. I'm gonna learn to understand prayer in the days ahead. I'm gonna step out of a life that only cries out in crisis and into a life that walks with you by faith because I understand my relationship with you and I grow in that. And what if we did that and we saw the response from God, which he said in his word in Mark chapter 11 was, you could say mountain move and it would. It would, it would. But let me say to you today right now, some of you might be listening to me and you'd go, I have a mountain. I wanna believe right now that it will move. Let me tell you, the mountain never moves before the relationship gets in place. Because he responds to your faith. And the only way to have faith, again, we're always learning, okay? We're always learning, always learning about God. We'll never know everything there is to know about God while we're on the earth today, because he's God, we're human. It isn't like you have to reach some level. What I'm saying is you have to make a conscious decision to say, while there's many things I do not understand, I've decided to believe that Jesus died on the cross, that he saved me from my past, from my present, and my future, and that God, who, who, who is a father, sent his son Jesus, take Discover God, we'd love to help teach you to understand more of what I'm talking about right now, who, who he is a father, I am his son, or has, is I am his son or his daughter, and therefore I can believe by faith he's good. From that, I begin to see obstacles moved. I cultivate that relationship. God wants you to pray in crisis, okay? But that should be like the 2% of our prayer life because we're making declarations by faith. And we have this attitude. I wanna give you this verse to close and then we'll pray. We have this attitude. Attitude's everything. How many of you have said that in your life before? Attitude is everything. Say it to my kids all the time. Attitude's everything. Colossians chapter four, verse two. If we could throw that up on the screen, since I'm not at my notes. Colossians chapter four, verse two. I think it's in my notes. If it's not, Colossians chapter four, verse two. There it is. Be persistent and devoted to prayer. Be alert and focused in your prayer life with an attitude of thanksgiving. I'm gonna teach us over the next few weeks a lot of practical ways to pray, more and more understanding. I'm gonna talk about praying in the power of the Spirit. Leave that verse up if you could. I'm gonna talk about praying in the power of the Spirit. Uh, uh, I hope hope to answer a lot of questions that you have and hope to help us all develop a, a greater prayer life. But he says right there, be alert and focused in your prayer life with an attitude of thanksgiving. Here's what you can do this week that I promise will change your prayer life and bring you closer to God. The moment you wake up in the morning, start saying thank you, God. Start finding things when you stand up out of bed to say thank you, God, for. 
If you'd spend the first three to five minutes of your day, thank you, thank you, God, that I had somewhere to sleep last night. Thank you, Lord, that I have clothes to put on today. Thank you, thank you, God, that, that I have a job. Thank you, God, by faith that you're getting me a job. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you, Lord, that I have shoes. Thank you, Lord, that I have food. Thank you, God, that it's not raining today. Praise God. I, I thank you, Lord, for a mirror so I can get the boogers out of my nose before I go see other people. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. And I just, I just start to go and I get this attitude of thanksgiving that's going on inside of me. And all of a sudden, because I have this attitude of thanksgiving, I start to have faith when I'm driving down the road. And I start to have faith when I go to work. And I start to have faith so that when crisis does happen, I'm like, God's got this. I know I'm going to be good to go because I'm so thankful that he's in me and that he's working with me. We can all do that. And we can start it today. Would you close your eyes with me? God, I, I thank you for your presence with us today. I thank you that you know what we need more than we know what we need. And Lord, I'll, I'll even confess to you in this moment right now, there's so much I wanna say right now about prayer. And I don't have time today. So I pray, God, you would keep us with a hunger to learn in these weeks ahead. I pray right now, Father, that you would help every one of us see, you, see ourselves as either your son or your daughter, who you are teaching and who you are shaping and who you are molding, no matter how long we have followed you, that there is, there is stuff for us to learn about this relationship of prayer with you and the power that it brings in and through our life. If you're here today right now and, and you know the truth is for your life, for you as an individual right now, what's been missing is that, that you do not have a relationship with Jesus. That, you, that, that while I would talk about faith and feelings and all those things, you pray, as I said, everybody prays to some level. But you know the truth is I, I have not been walking with the relationship with him where I see him as a loving father while I'm investing in that relationship. I, I, I've not been walking in that. And today you wanna change that. You wanna put your trust in him, maybe for the first time, but maybe it's a time to come back to Jesus. And you're like, today is a declaration day where I'm gonna focus on him and that relationship. If that's you, I'm gonna ask you to be very, very bold and to be full of faith. Again, this is if you're saying, I'm, gonna, I'm making a commitment to him in that relationship, or I'm coming back after a time of way, a time away to trust him. By faith, I wanna ask you, just lift your hand up right now. Say, that's me right now, and I'm declaring. It's awesome, that's awesome. Way to go, those of you lifting your hands right now. That is awesome. That's a step of faith. I want you to know, I ask you to raise your hand. It's a step of faith where God is seeing your hand, but he's seeing your heart more. And he's going, I'm gonna walk with you. I'm gonna walk with you. You can put your hands down. Would you pray this prayer with me if you lifted your hand? Pray this prayer with me all around the room, all campuses. If you're already all in follower of Jesus, say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for being there for me. Today, I've decided all my trust, all my hope is in you. I believe by faith, Nothing is impossible for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate.